This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hi, Hi! I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we are finally revisiting the bubble wig we initially made for our clear smart doll custom, Rina the Jellyfish Ballerina. We asked you what character would suit the pink and blue wig we teased in that video, and there were so many great suggestions. There was a lot of mention of aliens, and some of you pointed out that the bubbles looked like crystal balls, kinda like the ones fortune tellers have, so we decided to go with an alien fortune teller. At first, we really wanted to lean into the stereotypical fortune teller with the long skirt and such, you know, the scar from the head and the coin-like chains. Then we thought about a more astrology-themed doll. We went full alien fashion as well for a moment, and then we landed on this more hippie vibe set. I actually made the pants, hated the colors and fit because of the thickness of the fabric. I ordered a bunch of other fabric, decided that the blue was not gonna mesh well with the color of the doll, ordered more blue fabric in a panic, and made the top in the meantime, which was also not great. And after a few hours of hardcore brainstorming, I came up with this draped concept for a more goddessy vibe with help from my assistant Matilda. And Alex, of course. To make this wearable for a doll, I'm going to start with an altered version of a bodysuit from this pattern. First, I'm sewing the front pieces back into one and attaching the pink back piece at the shoulder and the white back piece at the side seam. I cut out a very long sleeve that will flow all the way to the floor and before I attach it, I'm going to gather it. While pinning it to the armhole, I am shaping the pleats and folds to be concentrated at the top of the shoulder. With that sewn in, I can sew the other side seam, catching a few centimeters of the sleeve as I want it to be open and flowy. Turning it to the right side feels like I'm doing one of those never-ending rope clown tricks. With that out of the way, I can hem the leg holes and the top edge, which I did by hand. I had to add a piece at the crotch, kinda like a gusset, because the pink fabric only stretches side to side and not top to bottom, and I couldn't close the bodysuit. Now I can sew the back together, making sure I leave a gap for the stand, and sew the gusset to the back after that. I put it on the doll to check the fit and the position of the stand hole, and it seems good so far. I cut out two very large quarter circles from both the pink fabric and some white stretchy net, and I'm going to attach them in the back along the longest edge. I was limited with the length of the skirt by the pink fabric, of which I only had about half a meter, so the front is shorter than the back and the pink is a single layer while the net is doubled up, because where I buy it, they don't allow to buy less than a whole meter, which often leaves me with a lot of fabric, but it turned out good in this case. The waist edge can now be gathered and pinned to the bodysuit upside down to hide the seam later. I use the back stitch to secure this to the bodysuit and it looks awesome! To make the magical bubbles on the wig, we first have to make the hydrogel beads. The recipe is pretty simple, just add water. This step should be pretty easy. And now we wait. I waited a couple hours, but for you, it's gonna be seconds for this forbidden bubble tea to be ready. I'm going to be using actual glass Christmas bubbles. My initial idea was to make a plug for these from an unused silicone mold, which I cut with the bubble itself, as the glass was pretty sharp but it was making the plugs too small, so I cut new ones by hand. Using some putty, I put the bubbles upright on the table and began filling them in with some iridescent glitter. I put the water beads in a syringe to crush them into the bubbles, and when I felt they were full enough, I started adding water. But then the bead crumbs kinda sunk, so I added more beads and plugged the bubbles with silicone. The result was not great, so I redid these with less beads and the snow globe effect was much better. I sealed the bubbles with hot glue, but it was not cutting it. However, I found some cork plugs and together with super glue, it worked wonderfully to seal the bubbles. Good evening, I'm Alex. We interrupt this broadcast of Ancient Arium on TV to bring you breaking news of an incredible deal from our sponsor, Squarespace. Our correspondent Barb is reporting this story from Portugal for no apparent reason. Barb, what can you tell about this? 
According to our witnesses, building your own website with Squarespace is, quote, as easy as stealing candy from a baby. This is thanks to Squarespace award-winning templates, which make the setup of your website a breeze. If you stumble on any problems, however, Squarespace offers email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Thanks to the automatically responsive designs, everything looks great even when you're out in the field, like myself, and browsing the website from your phone. Back to you, Alex. That's amazing, Barb. Thank you. And for you, our viewers, we have an exclusive offer. Go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, back to the regularly scheduled programming. If you watched Rina's video, you already know how the wig looks, but I'll show you how I did it anyway. I've got these three hair colors from the Doll Hair Emporium, and you may have seen them in our other videos too. Let's start from the wig cap. I'm using a piece of stretchy fabric and put it on a head that is protected with plastic wrap. I'm putting a lot of glue in several layers and it's ready when it's dry. Then I'm preparing the weft using glue as well. When the cap is painted I can start gluing the wefts from bottom and the back, going around and up. Doing a parting weft with nylon hair is always tricky. The fiber is stubborn and thick, but a hair straightener can do wonders with keeping the hair in place. I'm filling the gaps if there are any and trying to make the head look full of hair. I thought curly hair would fit the jellyfish theme, as this wig was made for Rina in the first place. So I wrapped every strand on a plastic straw and secured it with a bobby pin. Ok, maybe not every, I left four strands straight so I can wrap the bubbles later. Now, the standard procedure of setting the curls on nylon hair. A hot bath followed by an icy cold dunk. When the fiber is dry, I can untangle and separate the curls. Now it's time for the bubbles that inspired this whole concept. I wanted to use magnets to attach them, but I realized that every time I take off the wig the bubbles will fall and I will have to style the wig every time. I'm too lazy for that, so I'm simply gluing the orbs to the wig. To secure them and to cover the ugly parts, I'm wrapping them with the straight strands. I wanted the hair to look busy, so I'm adding another texture, a braid that makes the wrapping strands stay in place. To add even more detail, I'm tying these beaded ribbons, blue on the blue side and pink on the pink side. Let's cut the straight ends. It was a perfect length for Rina, but I kind of regret cutting the hair short like that. This girl could use a longer hairstyle. But I didn't know that then, so we have to move on. <laughs> And in this form, the wig waited for around 3 months. And now when the orbs don't have to resemble jellyfishes, which they never did, the braids can go around the bubbles and make the hair look less, um, square. This way she looks a bit like Jolene from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which not gonna lie, I'm always happy to see. Now, let's take care of the face. I have three candidates for this girl. One Entropy and two Genesis. Genesis. And since I'm going to modify the face, I'm choosing a safe option which is Genesis. If I screw up the first try, I will always have a backup head. I want her to have three eyes, two closed and one opened, so she looks like she's in the middle of a ritual or meditation. I made a hole with a scalpel first and then smooth the edges with a Dremel tool. When the opened eye is ready, I can close the other eyes with epoxy scope. I did it very carefully in a few layers, first trying to just fill the eye sockets. When it dried, I started building more volume to act as closed eyelids. She's an alien, so I have a perfect excuse to make it a bit more stylized than on our other dolls. I'm trying to smooth all the clay with a lot of water, so I don't have to sand it later. The problem with modifying vinyl heads is that the clay and vinyl reacts very differently to sanding, so having a smooth transition is not as easy as mods on hard plastic dolls. I did what I could to make it cohesive, but how good it looks depends on lightning. Now, when everything is one color, I can see all the imperfections. The marks around the eyes are visible at some angles and sometimes are not visible at all. 
but I already have a plan on how to cover them, so I'm not worried. I can always say she's an alien and this species has these marks, <laughs> or that she is an ancient oracle and she forgot to use her anti-aging cream today. Anyway, I'm starting with a layer of Mr. Super Clear and Chalk Pastels. I'm going for a full eye makeup with darker blue in the outside corners of the eyes. I'm also doing a blue and black liner on both eyes. Actually, on all of the eyes. At first, I thought she would look good with very stylized lashes, so my first try on those was bold and cartoonish. That will change later, but let's focus on the makeup first. I'm sketching where I want the liner to be with a white watercolor pencil. I think it's obvious that I chose this shape to cover the clay marks, but I wanted to try this kind of makeup for a long time. I've seen Moonlight Jewel making these crazy liners on her dolls, and that got me inspired. And I also think it will suit an alien oracle goddess. I've got the neon pink paint from Arteza that I've never used before, and I was tempted to use it here. I went over the white parts with pink, creating a gradient from lighter colors on top to dark pink on the bottom. When I started adding white next to the black lashes, I thought that she might look even better with more delicate lashes, but I was not ready for that step yet. I added more vibrant colors to the lips, and by the way, I did the line on her lips so she matches Coco, our first semi-real custom doll. I don't know, I just thought it would be cool if they had something in common. And then I finally decided to take the step and rework the lashes for more delicate and semi-real, I guess. I want them long and fluffy and slightly curled. This face has a lot of layers of paint done with an airbrush and then MSC. And some dust particles are here and there that I can't remove now. So to blend them in, I'm painting freckles with watercolor pencils in white and blue. Then I tried the head on the body with the dress and decided that the neon pink on her face is not the best match with the pink glittery fabric. So I added a layer of white pearl paint mixed with glossy varnish and it made all the pink parts look more pastel-y. The face was a challenge this time and it's definitely something very different from my usual style, but I love it! To complement the dress, I wanted to make a pair of sandals for this girl. I started this undertaking by modeling a pair of sole bases to 3D print on our Elegoo Saturn 2 later. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a pattern for these shoes along with a 3D file. I will be using this iridescent slash holographic, I'm not sure this time, snake-like faux leather, and I already cut my pieces out. This is what it should look like in the end. I'm starting by sewing the heel parts right sides together. In the seam allowance, I'm making two relief cuts and gluing it flat to the heel. To make it easier to glue this to the insole later, I'm making some relief cuts in the seam allowance as well here. I really did that for the strap part because I accidentally made the piece for the wrong foot the first time around. For the insole, as per usual, I am gluing a cardboard piece to some fabric, white cotton in this case, and cutting around it with pinking shears to make folding the edge down easier. With my trusty Woohoo glue, I am folding the tabs as close to the cardboard as I can. We can now put the back piece and the insole together. I'm following the drawn line and folding the tabs down, while making sure the seam we made is lining up well with the back of the insole, if that makes sense. I'm going to glue the strap to the insole in the same way, lining it up with the line I put on the bottom of the insole. A quick check with the last and it seems all good. I'm going to make the ankle strap now. I cut out a hole for the stick thing in the buckle and I'm going to sew it to the back on the outside of the shoe. On the inside I'm just going to add a strap. With a generous amount of glue I can attach the upper to the base and to finish it off I made some soles with a little heel for the bottom out of thick craft foam. I'm sure Alex will work wonders with some paints and decorations on these later. To add some more of that shiny iridescent vibe to the whole design, I cut out a belt from this 3D PU leather and I'm gonna add a snap for the back. It's really simple. Or so I thought. I wanted to use the bigger snaps I have, which can be put together with a pinch tool thingy, but the tool was not cooperating with me, so we're gonna use the good old hammer and the smaller snaps. 
This worked really well, even too well perhaps, as the snaps were so strong I almost tore the leather. Time to finish the shoes. I had a few ideas on how to decorate them, but at the end I decided to just paint the soles with pink, purple and blue. I chose a design that matches the shape of the graphic liner on her eyelids. I thought about adding a stripe and this iridescent thingy to fit with a belt, but it would probably make the shoes impossible to put on, so I dropped that idea. I'm not sure if I like the bottom part of the sole, so I covered it with a stripe of this iridescent snake fabric. I've got some more details to add to this design, like these simple arm guards, so it looks like she's wearing a set with a belt. And also I made these blue antennas, because an alien should have antennas, right? One of the most important things in this design is the eye. I've got this eye base we printed for Coco and I'm painting an eye design on the flat surface. I really like how it turned out design-wise, but the rest of the execution didn't make it shine. I mean, it shines because I used resin, but the shape of the dome is not right. It just doesn't look good inside the head. My second try is to paint one of the eyes barb casted from resin for Rina. I painted it in a simple fashion because there's so much going on on the face already and I don't want to make too much detail there. I'm adding a coat of UV resin for extra shine. The eye is finished and with it inside, the doll is ready. This is how she turned out. I'm always really happy to customize another smart doll as sewing for them is my favorite. I think it's the fact that gravity seems to be working with the fabric much better in this scale than for smaller dolls. I think Alex had fun this time as well with the face mods as she usually complains about not being able to do mods for these dolls, especially on the body, which we opt out of since the dolls are a bit pricey to dedicate to one character. Since this girl is a fortune teller, we decided her name should be a tribute to the famous Polish TV fortune teller called Wróżbita Maciej. You know, one of these guys you call into the TV station and he answers your problem with everyone watching. We settled on the closest equivalent to the male name Maciej, which is Macy. I know I pushed the alien theme on this doll in Rina's video, but I really wanted to make an alien smart doll. What other fantastic or extraterrestrial creatures would you like to see on a custom smart doll? Let us know in the comments down below. We already have a succubus, a cat girl, a fox girl, a vampire, a cyborg, a jellyfish girl and... um... Mori. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Enchantarium. Follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. My name is Barb, have an enchanted day, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> Zrobiłaś takie. <laughs> Możesz tam coś wrzucić, jakąś taką magię, bo coś.